In the last video, we used the chart at the bottom of the screen that I'm highlighting with my laser pointer in order to predict the products of reactions where we start with a substituted benzene derivative, such as this one that I'm highlighting with my laser pointer in the upper left screen that had a directing group bonded to it, where the directing group is one of the groups that are shown in the chart below, where the line leading away from the group in each case refers to where the aromatic ring would be. And so we refer to each of these as directing groups. And that's why we abbreviate as D in the generic schematic up top. And what we learned in the last video was that depending upon the identity of the directing group, the directing group would either result in the formation of an electrophilic aromatic substitution product that corresponded to the new substituent, the electrophile E, going to the ortho and the para position in the case of the starting structure having an ortho para director, that is any of those groups up top here that I'm blocking off in this ortho para director section, or alternatively, if one of these so-called meta directors toward the bottom of the screen was attached to the ring at the onset of the reaction, then the final product would correspond to the meta product, placing the electrophile meta to the directing group that was there initially. And so what we are going to look at in this video is we are going to evaluate why it is the case that some groups are ortho para directors and others are meta directors. By the end of the video, you will not only be able to explain why any group off of this chart would act as a meta director or an ortho para director, but you will also have some additional mechanistic insights into these types of reactions that will allow you to not rely on memorization to know whether something is an ortho para director or a meta director, but instead to rely on your understanding of this concept in order to evaluate whether a particular atom or group that's bonded to the aromatic ring would act as an ortho para director or as a meta director. And so that way, even if you were given some group that is different than anything listed on this chart, you would be able to evaluate whether that group is an ortho para director or a meta director without relying upon any memorization of this table, but instead relying upon your understanding of the concept. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this reaction, evaluating why some groups are ortho para directors and others are meta directors. The first thing I want to bring to your attention before we jump into the mechanism for this is that if we look at the top part of the chart here, these ortho para directors, all of these are electron donors by resonance or by induction with resonance being the primary consideration and induction being a secondary consideration. And so if something is electron donating by resonance, but electron withdrawing by induction, it is going to fit into this bin of ortho para directors because resonance is more important than induction. And so if there's a group that donates electrons by resonance, it's going to fall into the bin of electron donation being the major impact of the group. And these groups are all electron donating by resonance or induction. Because if we look at their structures, in the case of all of the groups that have lone pair electrons directly attached to the atom coming off the aromatic ring, so in the case of all these nitrogens and oxygens that are directly attached to the aromatic ring where the nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons, or down here, another case of these so-called moderately activating groups that have nitrogen or oxygen directly attached to the aromatic ring. Down here to what we refer to as an R group, which R here is defined as an alkyl group. Alkyl groups are not electron donating by resonance, but they are electron donating by induction. And then a second aromatic ring would also be electron donating. And the way that it's electron donating is much like the lone pairs up here could donate electrons by moving the pi electrons over, I mean, by moving the lone pair electrons over toward the ring, over toward the ring, over toward the ring, you get the idea. Similarly, the aromatic ring could donate electrons by taking a pi bond and moving it over toward the ring. So all of these are electron donating by resonance, where we're able to show electron pushing arrows indicating the movement of electrons from the original location, that is that nitrogen or oxygen or other atom that's directly attached to the aromatic ring, 
or a pi bond over toward the aromatic ring. And we could also do that with our halogens down here because the lone pairs of electrons on the chlorine, fluorine, bromine, etc., could move over toward the aromatic ring. And so this is going to be one of the important things that we will consider as a factor that is going to lead us toward an ortho para director is if the group is able to donate electrons by resonance as the number one consideration or by induction. On the other hand, the groups that we see down here at the bottom that are meta directors are going to be electron withdrawing groups is the correlation that we can make amongst those groups. And so with this observation that groups that act as ortho para directors are electron donors by resonance as the first consideration, induction as the second if there is no resonance, whereas meta directors are groups that are electron withdrawing, again, ranking resonance as the most important factor for consideration and assigning a group as electron withdrawing and induction as second most important. We can say that the general trend we see is that groups that are electron withdrawing by resonance or induction are going to be meta directors. Groups that are electron donating by resonance or induction are going to be ortho para directors. So why is that going to be the case? Well, let's take a look at the mechanisms that lead to the ortho para products versus the meta products to evaluate why the business of electron donation is going to result in ortho para products electron withdrawing groups attached to the ring are going to result in meta directing groups instead. Let's take a look. So thinking about the mechanisms that lead to each of these products, the mechanisms of reactions are generally your main clue about particular observations one can make about regioselectivity or stereoselectivity about the reaction. And that's going to be true here as well. So we're going to draw out the mechanisms that lead to the ortho meta and para product. And I'm going to start with my substituted aromatic ring where D is our directing group. So that's whatever group is bonded to that aromatic ring. It would be anything off that directing groups chart or anything else that could conceivably be bonded to that aromatic ring. We are going to react with an electrophile, which I will define as E for electrophile. And we will show how we reach the ortho, the meta, and the para product via this reaction. So first off, the first scenario I'm going to show is how we get to the ortho product. So what is the pathway to the ortho product? What is the ortho reaction mechanism? And in these electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, generally what happened first in the mechanism was that we created a stronger electrophile by reacting the electrophile with some catalyst or something along those lines. And that varied a bit depending upon exactly which EAS reaction mechanism you were looking at, be it nitration or Friedel-Crafts alkylation or Friedel-Crafts acylation, halogenation, etc. Since we're trying to keep with a generic reaction here, I'm going to show a generic electrophile that I'm just going to abbreviate as E+, indicating that this electrophile could be whatever electrophile we want, any of those common electrophiles that we looked at in the previous videos where we were looking at reaction mechanisms of benzene and EAS. So what I'm going to do is to show how to get to the ortho product. We need to be mindful about which of the pi electrons we have come over and attack the electrophile because we ultimately want the electrophile to form a bond right here where I'm highlighting with the laser pointer. That's the ortho position. It's on the carbon directly adjacent to where the directing group is. So let's take our pi electrons from here bring those up to grab E, the electrophile, and that's going to result in formation of our arenium ion. So now we'll show the formation of our arenium ion. Our directing group D is still going to be attached there. And now we will have at the ortho position E for our electrophile has formed a bond there. The hydrogens that were attached to each of these two carbons to start with will still be there. And I'm plugging those in explicitly just so that I will be confident that here where I'm putting the positive charge is where that positive charge actually resides. And now at this point, what we haven't mentioned in the past is that this particular intermediate has a positive formal charge that is allylic to a pi bond, and there will be resonance occur within this system. And so 
it's not going to be just this individual structure that exists, but instead a hybrid of possible resonance structures. So let's draw out those possible resonance structures because oftentimes resonance can give us clues about the stability or lack thereof of a system. So to draw the additional resonance structures, I'm gonna take the pi bond over to here, like so, and go ahead and draw out my product of that resonance electron pushing arrow. So we bring the electron pushing arrow over, that's gonna put the pi bond right here. Other pi bond, we haven't done anything to, so it's gonna stay up there. Directing group still where it was, so I'll put the D at the top there for directing group. And our positive charge now will reside right there. Now we can show an additional resonance structure, like so. Show my electron pushing arrows to indicate how that forms by bringing the pi bond in black over one spot, and that will enable the positive charge then to shift up onto the carbon of the ring that is attached to the directing group. So let's go ahead and show that additional resonance structure here. Just drawing in all of my atoms like they were to start with because with resonance, we are always only moving electrons. We are never moving atoms. So I moved my electrons there. The newly moved electrons are shown in red as that pi bond. And then now, if we work out where the positive charge is going to reside, it will reside right here on that carbon that is adjacent to the directing group. And so as we look at these resonance structures, what is the case is that if D, highlighted up here in your upper right corner, is an electron donating group, that is going to stabilize the resonance structure, particularly going to stabilize this resonance structure where we have placed the positive charge directly adjacent to that directing group. And so therefore, if D, the directing group, is an electron donor, that is going to stabilize the carbocation because of the fact that if you have an electron donating group here, it's pushing electron density toward that positive charge, thereby diminishing that positive formal charge and stabilizing that intermediate. And that is really important because this is the least stable step of the reaction mechanism. It is the slowest step of the mechanism because it's generating this unstable, non-aromatic arenium intermediate. So anything we can do to stabilize this arenium intermediate is going to make the overall reaction pathway faster and it's going to make it more favorable. And so if D is an electron donor, then this intermediate is going to be very, very stable. And in fact, as an additional piece of this, if that D is electron donating by resonance because it has a lone pair of electrons on that atom that's directly attached to the aromatic ring, then we can actually draw another resonance structure for this as well. And so I'm gonna show that additional resonance structure possibility here. But in general, regardless of how D is donating electrons by resonance or by induction, such as if we're an alkyl group, we'll be donating by induction, it's going to stabilize that positive formal charge. And so I'm gonna draw an additional resonance structure in here. I'll zoom out just a little bit so I have room for it. So drawing in my additional resonance structure, and I'm gonna put the addendum here since we're doing a generic reaction. This will work if D has a lone pair of electrons directly on that atom that's connected to the aromatic ring. So our fourth resonance structure that we could draw is if we have a lone pair of electrons here, like I've drawn on D, then what can happen is that lone pair of electrons can come down to make a double bond between carbon and that directing group added atom that it's directly connected to. And so as a result then, there's an additional spot for that positive formal charge to reside. So the positive formal charge can be delocalized, shared completely over this additional atom, the atom that I'm referring to here as D, that is the atom that is directly connected to the aromatic ring or to the arenium ion in this particular case. So we took the lone pair electrons from D, our directing group, showing those coming down to make 
a carbon directing group pi bond there. And that allows the positive charge now to be out here on the directing group atom, creating a total of four resonance structures where the positive charge is shared over four different atoms. So that positive charge is one of the main features that creates instability in the system. And so by being able to share that across another atom, that's going to help improve the stability. But even if there aren't a lone pair of electrons on D, you would still have access to these three resonance structures that I'm highlighting with my laser pointer here. And this one in particular, the third one that I showed would be very stabilizing because of the fact that if D is an electron donating group of any sort, it's going to help stabilize that positive charge there. So this is our situation of leading to the ortho product. And we can envision that if D is electron donating, this pathway is going to be pretty favorable for the reasons that we just mentioned about creating the extra resonance structure to further delocalize the positive charge. Um, and additionally, even if we can't create that additional fourth resonance structure, if D is electron donating by only induction and there is no fourth resonance structure, we can still stabilize that positive charge by induction through electron donation from an alkyl group or something like that. On the other hand though, if D instead of being an electron donor, if D is an electron withdrawing group, pulling electron density away from the ring, this is going to become a very unfavorable path. It is going to become a very slow path because by resonance or by induction, if D is pulling electron density away from the ring, then that is going to destabilize the positive formal charge at this position. And by destabilizing that positive formal charge by pulling electron density away from it, that is going to create a pathway that is very high energy and hence very unfavorable. And so this is why if D is an electron donor, the directing group is an electron donor, the pathway to the ortho product is really favorable. If D on the other hand is an electron withdrawing group, it becomes a very unfavorable path. And so that is why when we were looking at our chart of electron donating and electron withdrawing groups, we could see a specific trend. And that specific trend we saw was that groups that are up here that donate electrons by resonance or by induction lead to the ortho para product. And we can justify why it leads to the ortho product because by leading to the ortho product, our intermediate here is stabilized by the fact that there's an electron donating group there because we have all these groups that have lone pair electrons directly attached to the aromatic ring that is going to provide electron donation by resonance. And the other scenario that we see here is that we have an R group, which is an alkyl group that is electron donating by induction. So that is going to make the route to the ortho product really favorable. On the other hand, if we have an electron withdrawing group in there, this is going to be an unfavorable path because all these electron withdrawing groups that are down here at the bottom in red and listed as meta directors are instead of sending electron density toward the aromatic ring, they are instead going to be pulling electron density away from the aromatic ring. Because if we think about the resonance structures that be going on here, if we have a carbonyl group directly attached to the ring, the resonance structure would correspond to the pi bond going up onto the oxygen. That is pulling electrons away from the aromatic ring rather than sending the electrons toward the aromatic ring. And that is similar all the way across here and down here as well. So let's take a look at the route to the meta product and see if we can make some conclusions from the mechanism about why the meta product is favorable if we have one of these electron withdrawing groups attached to the aromatic ring. So I've zoomed way out on our electron donating and electron withdrawing or activator and deactivator ortho para director meta director chart so that we can look in detail at the mechanism that leads to the meta product. So this is the meta pathway this is the type of mechanism that you could apply toward a specific electrophile. 
So D again is our directing group. That is whatever group was directly attached to the aromatic ring in the chart here that we have in the lower right corner, too small to read at the moment. E is our electrophile. And I'm again gonna try to keep this as streamlined as possible and as generic to whatever situation you run into as possible by using E plus to represent our electrophile. We're gonna assume that that electrophile has already gone through whatever reaction with a catalyst it needs to in order to be a really strong electrophile. So we bring the pi bond over and it is going to link onto our electrophile. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw out our intermediate here, directing group there in D. And now the pi bond that we had here is now instead a covalent bond to the electrophile E. So I'm gonna plug in the electrophile E and I've done that strategically here by placing the electrophile at the meta position relative to the original directing group. And now we put in our positive charge right here, like so, and we go forward with resonance like we did in our quest for the ortho product up top. So drawing our resonance structures out here, we can move the pi bond over to here to make a carbon-carbon double bond in that position. So let's go ahead and draw that out. So I'm just drawing out my atoms here, leaving those all in place. The electrons that have moved have come over to here, and that's going to then put the positive charge right here. Now let's draw another resonance structure until we exhaust all of the possibilities. So looking at what else we can draw here, drawing in my atoms, and then I will move my electrons around. I'm just drawing the skeleton of the molecule out here. So now in this resonance scenario, I could take the pi bond and move it over toward the positive formal charge to create an additional resonance structure. So I'm gonna put in the pi bond right here. I'm gonna put in the carbon-carbon bond in black there, and I'm going to put in positive formal charge right here. And now if we try to draw another additional resonance structure by moving either of these pi bonds, what we would find is that we would end up reverting back to one of the resonance structures that we already drew. So we have drawn out all three of our possible resonance structures here for the situation where we are putting our electrophile at the meta position. And what you will notice about these resonance structures that I have drawn is that none of these resonance structures place the positive charge on the carbon that is bonded to the directing group. So notice what I'm highlighting with my laser pointer here in the resonance structure that is at your left. There's no positive charge on that carbon that's directly bonded to the directing group. Come to the middle resonance structure, same situation. The positive charge is not on the carbon that's bonded to the directing group. And then structure to the far right, there's no positive charge on the carbon bonded to the directing group. So these three resonance structures all avoid having the positive charge attached to the carbon that's bonded to the directing group. That is definitely a different situation than we had in the ortho pathway up top, where one of our resonance structures had the positive charge directly on, directly on the carbon that is attached to the directing group, making the effect of the directing group very intense and pronounced on stabilizing or destabilizing that positive formal charge there. Here, instead, the positive charge is further away from the directing group, and so the directing group has less of an impact than in the top case scenario here. And so what the result of that is going to be is that if D is an electron donor that would act to stabilize a carbocation, this path is going to be unfavorable relative to the path leading to the ortho product or the para product. On the other hand, if the directing group D is an electron withdrawing group, this is going to become the more favorable path. It's going to be more favorable than the ortho or the para path because of the fact that the directing group is in all resonance structures relatively far away from the positive formal charge. It's never on that carbon that is directly 
bonded to the directing group like we had up top and I'm highlighting with the laser pointer. We don't run into that scenario in our meta pathway. Our resonance structure is a void, putting the positive charge on the carbon that has the directing group on it. And so therefore, thinking about the lesser of two evils really here, if your D is an electron withdrawing group, the more favorable path is going to be the meta pathway over the ortho pathway. And then the third case scenario is that we could head toward the para product. So let's draw out the para pathway. So drawing out our para mechanism, we start with our molecule that has D as our directing group, plug in my pi bonds, react with our electrophile, which I'm calling E plus. And what's going to happen here to get to the para product, we have to take the pi bond from over here that I'm showing. It attacks the electrophile. That is going to result in the formation of a carbon electrophile bond. So we have D up top here still, pi bond here, pi bond here. And then that third pi bond came in and formed a covalent bond to the electrophile. So I'm plugging in the electrophile E. I'll show the hydrogen here and here just as a reminder of where the atoms are in this molecule. Positive charge going to be right here because that's the carbon that lies three bonds to it. And then now we play the game that we did up top, which is draw the additional resonance structures and see where that positive charge ends up. So coming down to here, like so, drawing out my aromatic ring, draw my groups in that it is bonded to, drawing out the newly moved pi bond, I'll put it right here. That's going to place the positive charge here on the carbon that is attached to the directing group. We can also draw an additional resonance structure. So I'll draw my resonance arrow here. And it never matters what order you write the resonance structures in as long as you have the correct structures. And then the third possible arrangement of electrons by resonance is we move the pi bond from here up to here. That's going to create a third possibility. And that third possibility, plugging in my atoms, plugging in my directing group D and showing the pi bond that is just moved in red, show my positive formal charge right here, is going to result in this additional resonance structure. And what you will notice here is that just like the ortho pathway up top, where we had, as I'm showing in my laser pointer up top, we had a resonance structure where we could show that the directing group D was adjacent to the positive charge Similarly, down here, we can also show that as well. So the pathway leading to the para product, like the pathway leading to the ortho product, has a resonance structure whereby resonance, there is a positive charge adjacent to the directing group. And so the directing group in the para situation, just like the directing group in the ortho situation, is going to stabilize the carbocation if that D, the electron, or if that D, the directing group, donates electrons toward the carbocation, that's going to stabilize. And so the observation or principles here for the para situation is the same as for ortho. And that is if D, the directing group, is an electron donor, this pathway, this intermediate, is going to be favorable. On the other hand, if D is an electron withdrawing group, this is going to be an unfavorable path relative to the meta path because if D, the directing group, is an electron withdrawing group, that's going to be pulling electron density away from this carbocation that's positioned right there on the directing group, and that is going to dramatically destabilize the intermediate relative to going down the meta pathway to get to the final product where none of the carbocations are on the atom adjacent to the directing group. And so this is why in the case of electron donating groups, electron donating groups are going to lead to the ortho and the para products. And it's going to be an equal preference for those two products, ortho and para by electronic effects, such as resonance and induction, because of the fact that by resonance, we see the set of resonance structures that we create headed toward the ortho product is completely analogous to the ones we create headed toward the para product in that we create a resonance structure where the directing group D is directly attached to the positively charged carbon. And that directing group D, if it's an electron donor group, 
is going to create a very favorable low energy situation. If it's electron withdrawing, it's going to create a high energy unfavorable situation. And I will add that this para situation down at the bottom here, just like at the top with the ortho scenario, if we have a lone pair of electrons on that electron donating group, we can move those down to make a double bond between the electron donating group and the aromatic ring or the arenium ion rather in this case. And so we could do the same thing down here. We could draw a fourth resonance structure down here where we would take the lone pair electrons from D, the directing group, and bring those down to make a carbon directing group double bond if we needed to there. So be aware that there is a fourth resonance structure here if D has a lone pair and that lone pair has to be directly attached to that first atom off of the ring so that it can come in and participate in that resonance. So to take us to the grand finale of this and summarize, we go back to our chart here. And as we circle back to our chart, we have classified groups as strongly activating at the top of the chart all the way down to strongly deactivating. And what this is going to correspond to is that the groups up top here are going to correspond to the strongest electron donors giving the most stable arenium intermediate. And that most stable arenium intermediate is going to lead to the ortho and the para products based on the mechanism that we saw here. On the other hand, when we get to the bottom of the chart, we're going to see the groups that are the strongest electron withdrawing groups that are going to lead to a strong preference for the meta product because the meta product is going to create a more stable pathway for the reaction to go than the pathway leading to the ortho or the para product when you're dealing with an electron withdrawing group that is directly attached to the ring. And in none of these cases where we have a meta director, is the reaction going to be as fast and favorable as the ortho and the para pathways? Because in the meta situation, there are no intermediates here that are particularly stable and favorable. Unlike when we're headed toward ortho or para, where we have this really stable, favorable resonance structure that results from having an electron donating group on the atom adjacent to the carbocation, giving strong electron donation by resonance or by induction. And so we can really look at this chart and go, okay, the atoms and groups that are in the top part here are our strongest electron donating groups. We go down and we find groups that are less strongly electron donating, such as alkyl groups. We have an alkyl group R right here. Alkyl groups are electron donating by induction, but induction is less strong of a force than resonance. And so therefore having an alkyl group there is not going to make the reaction as favorable and activated as if we had one of these groups that has a lone pair of electrons directly attached to the aromatic ring. And then toward the middle here, we have these situations where we're commonly seeing a lone pair of electrons on an atom and then followed by that a carbonyl group and the reason this is moderately activating and not as strongly activating as cases where we don't have that carbonyl group further on down the chain is because the carbonyl group does have some electron withdrawing effect that offsets the electron donating effect from the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom here because um, the electron withdrawing group carbonyl would be acting to some extent to pull electrons away from the ring. But then we get down here to the bottom, and if we have a carbonyl group directly attached to the aromatic ring, there is no way for electrons to be donated to the ring, period. And so that's going to make that group deactivating and a meta director because there's no favorable route for that reaction to go to give relatively stabilized arenium intermediates. So the pathway to the ortho meta and the para product is dictated by these directing groups because of the fact that some of them are electron donating and others are direct electron withdrawing. And so if you look at a particular group and you say it's an electron donor by resonance or induction, you can say that group is going to be an ortho para director. If on the other hand, it's electron withdrawing, it is going to be a meta director. So this is all about getting comfortable with recognizing who's an electron donor, who's an electron withdrawing group. And with that information in mind, you would not need this chart 
at all in order to determine the outcome of a reaction. And that's really a useful way to think about it when you are doing things in the future, like conquering the MCAT and whatever, where you won't necessarily have or likely have your notes in front of you.